Empty by Brony Rider. She hadn't even said goodbye. Scootaloo stared blankly up at the ceiling of her room, wishing that it had been different. Rainbow Dash had been her idol, her mentor, someone that she could look up to when things got bad. But it seemed that Rainbow Dash didn't care it. In the end, why else had she gone off to join the Wonderbolts without even saying goodbye to anyone else? Saying goodbye to any pony at all, some element of loyalty she was. Of course her parents and Rainbow Dash's friends had just assured her that Rainbow Dash would be back and that she had to leave quickly as the Wonderbolts only had so much time to perform tryouts as they had an incredibly busy schedule. They needed to find their newest member as soon as possible. They were all empty, words in the end. Scootaloo knew that Rainbow Dash's friends were all as hurt that she had left so abruptly as she was. Scootaloo sighed and sat up in her bed. Had she spent most of the past week in her bed, when she wasn't at school, that is, staring at the signed picture of Rainbow Dash and thinking back to all the good times the two had together. Her parents had told her to stop moping that Rainbow Dash would be back in Ponyville as soon and often as she could. Still, Scootaloo couldn't help but feel slightly abandoned by her idol. After a few minutes, her mother knocked on the, her door. Yeah? said Scootaloo. Scoots, baby. It's time for school, her mother said gently. Scootaloo merely nodded and got off her bed. How are you doing today, honey? Fine, lied Scootaloo. If her mother picked up on the lie, Scootaloo was sure that she had. She didn't say anything. She knew that her daughter needed the space right now. Having said that, Scootaloo expected them to insist that she get over Rainbow Dash leaving very soon. Friends come and go, her father would say. You can't dwell on it forever. She wasn't bound to you. She had her own life. And you know badly she wanted to join the Wonderbolts. Scootaloo slung her saddlebag over her shoulder and took her scooter and a helmet off their perch on the shelf near the front door of their home. Aren't you going to have some breakfast first? Asked her mother. Scootaloo shook her head. She strapped her helmet on and took off down the road. The road to school was not a long one. And from the, where Scootaloo lived, she only had to pass through a small section of town to get to the school. With her scooter, she usually made the journey in a few minutes with more than enough time to spare before class started. She often used that time to get in a few crusading ideas with Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle. However, her mother questioned about breakfast had awoken a slight feeling of hunger inside her. She hadn't eaten since last night, and the first pang of hunger were beginning to creep up inside of her. She was going to be miserable all day if she didn't have something to eat now. Plus, wasn't Cheerilee always saying something about breakfast being the most important meal of the day? With a sigh, Scootaloo turned left to, at the next corner, towards the town's confectionery, Sugar Cube Corners. She had a few bits in her saddlebag. Hopefully it was enough for a small muffin, which she could use to tide herself over until lunch where she could get a proper meal. As she buzzed along on her scooter, she noted something rather odd. A crowd of ponies were, was heading in the direction of the bakery themselves. Scootaloo frowned to herself. Normally, this wouldn't be an odd occurrence as the bakery was the most popular restaurant in town, in no small part due to the baking of Ponyville's residential party pony, Pinkie Pie. But Scootaloo sensed that something was off. The ponies weren't chatting happily among themselves, like they normally did. No, this time, they were speaking in hushed whispers. As if a nameless fear had gripped them, 
and the source was Sugar Cube Corners. Scootaloo's unease grew as the distance to the bakery decreased and the number of ponies heading there increased. After a minute or so, the gingerbread house confectionery came into view. What Scootaloo saw chilled her to the bone. Normally, Ponyville was a very peaceful and quiet town. Violence was not common in the slightest, and if a pair of ponies did get into a fight, only one member of the Ponyville Police Department would be called into action to combat the disturbance. This, though, this was different. Scootaloo stared on in shock and awe as what appeared to be every single member of the Ponyville Police Department was swarming sugar cube corners with a singleness of purpose that only made Scootaloo more nervous. Something was wrong here. Something was very wrong. A line of yellow police tape blocked off the perimeter of sugar cube corners the throng of curious ponies at bay while the police did their job. Whatever that was, Scootoo looked up at one of the ponies, Lyra Heartstrings, standing next to her. Do you know what's going on? She asked. Lyra looked down at her with a look of sheer horror on her face. She killed her, Lyra whispered. She killed them all and fed them to us. Huh? What are you talking about? asked Scootaloo. Who killed who? Lyra didn't answer. She merely turned her gaze back to Sugar Cube Corners and pointed. Scootaloo followed her gaze and her mouth dropped open when she saw the pony with a corner jacket wheeling a gurney out of the bakery. On the gurney was a large black bag that only, that could only have housed one thing. A body. I, I don't... Her shock was multiplied when another body was wheeled out of the bakery and put into the nearby coroner's wagon. Then another, then another, then another, and yet another. All told Scootaloo counted 26 body bags that were wheeled out of the bakery. However, what disturbed Scootaloo the most was that the fact that the bags didn't seem to be completely full, as if the b police had only found bits and pieces of the ponies. What happened? asked Scootaloo in a horrifying whisper. Before Lyra could answer, the horrified silence of Ponyville was cut short by a familiar noise. Spring! 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 Any pony in town would recognize it, that noise. It was a noise that Pinkie Pie made whenever she bounced around. Hearing it meant that happy-go-lucky Mare was bouncing around, making Pony smile wherever she could. Scootaloo kept her gaze focused on the entrance of the confectionery, and was rewarded by the sight of the pink Mare bouncing out the front door. A gasp rang through the crowd when Pinky exited the building. She was being flanked by four police officers, and she was wearing hoof cuffs. When Pinkie Pie saw the crown, she burst into her gigantic trademark smile. Hi, everybody, said Pinkie Pie. It's so nice to see all of you. i my bestest friends here. Move it, you, growled one of the police officers, escorting Pinkie Pie. Okie dokie dokie! Responded the pink mare. Pinkie Pie resumed her happy bouncing as she was ex was escorted into the back of a nearby police wagon. As the door of the wagon slammed shut, the crowd began to murmur amongst themselves, each trying to register what it was that had ha just happened. Scootaloo looked up at Lyra. Excuse me, Miss Lyra. What's going on? questioned the orange filly. Why did the police just arrest Pinkie Pie? Because she killed them, said Lyra. 
She kidnapped ponies and killed them in the basement of Sugar Cube Corners. What? No. Pinkie Pie wouldn't do stuff like that. But Lyra didn't respond. She merely turned around and walked away. Scootaloo looked back at Sugar Cube Corners as the police continued to file out the confectionery. Scootaloo noticed something odd that one of them was carrying. It looked like a dress of some sort, but she couldn't quite get her hoof on what exactly it was made out of. It looked like, at that moment, she spotted something horrifyingly familiar on the dress. A pair of intersecting peppermint sticks on, on one of the patches on the dress. Scootaloo's eyes widened in horror. She realized that it was Twist's cutie mark. Her mind flashed back to when she had first found out that Twist had disappeared a few weeks back. The police had summarized that she had gotten lost in the Everfree Forest somehow, but they were confident that they would find her in no time. It seemed that they just had. No, whispered Scootaloo. Twist, no. An icy feeling crept up on her stomach when she put two and two together, Twist disappearing, her cutie mark appearing on the dress, the body bags. Scootaloo had to hold back a, a sob when she realized what had happened. Pinkie Pie had kidnapped and murdered Twist. Scootaloo jumped back on her scooter and zoomed away from the scene of the horrifying crime. She couldn't be here. Not now. Home. She had to go home. As she zoomed back toward the safe confines of her house, tears began to stream on her face. How could Pinkie Pie do something like this? Twist. Twist had always been so happy, so trusting. And Pinkie Pie had murdered her in a short moment. She burst through the door of her house. Mommy! She called out, pathetically, instantly. The mare, in question, walked out of the kitchen. Scootaloo, what are you doing home? Shouldn't you... Scootaloo jumped off her scooter and wrapped her legs around her mother's left forehoof and began sobbing. Scootaloo, what's the matter? She, she, she killed Twist, said Scootaloo. What? Who, who killed Twist, honey? Scootaloo didn't have the strength to respond. She could only continue sobbing into her mother's foreleg. Her mother sat down and wrapped her foreleg around her daughter, pulling her in for a tight into a tight hug. What's going on? Asked the voice of Scootaloo's father. What's wrong with Scootaloo? I don't know. Responded her mother. She just said something about about how someone murdered Twist. Twist, isn't that the filly that went missing a few weeks ago? She killed her! Repeated Scootaloo through her sobs. She killed her! Who killed her? Asked Scootaloo. Honey, tell mommy. Who killed Twist? Before Scootaloo could answer, the free ponies heard the sounds of loud knocking on their door. I'll get that, said Scootaloo's father. Scootaloo continued crying to her mother's foreleg as Scootaloo's father opened the door. Uh, good morning, officers. What can I do for you? She heard her father say nervously. Good morning, sir. We have been instructed to inform you that, that we have arrested one Pinkie Pie after the a pony escaped her basement from Pinkie Pie was holding her with the intent to, to torture and murder her before harvesting her to make into cupcakes. A list of victims will be released shortly, but for now, we only ask that you to give us your full cooperation in this case, if we need it. Good day to you, sir. Scootaloo sobbed harder as the officer reported what happened. Oh, my Celestia. Honey, please take Scootaloo up to her room. We have a lot to talk about, said her father. Yes, of course. Scootaloo's mother placed her sobbing daughter on her back and lovingly carried her up to her room. She then placed the orange filly in her bed and tucked her in, thankfully, 
Scootaloo seemed to have calmed down in the safe confines of her bed, and she stopped sobbing. Her mother kissed her on the forehead and slowly stroked her mane. Shh. It's going to be... It's okay, said her mother smoothly. Just try to get some sleep, and your father and I will do our best to figure out what's going on. I'm sure your friend Twist is just fine. No, Mommy, whispered Scootaloo. I saw it. I saw one of the police officers carrying out a dress made of cutie marks. Twist's cutie mark was one of them. She killed her mom. Pinkie Pie killed Twist. Scootaloo's mother didn't respond. She merely sat at the foot of Scootaloo's bed. For a brief moment before, she gave a heavy sigh and stood up. Try to get some rest, baby. Your father and I will, uh... And with that, her mother walked out of the room, leaving Scootaloo all alone. Scootaloo rolled over on her side, causing the sheer... causing the tears she was shedding to drip onto her pillow. She tightened the blanket around her, hoping that the warm embrace of the blanket could mimic the warm embrace of her mother. She wanted to be told that Twist wasn't dead, that she had been found in the Everfree Forest, scared but alive and well. But she knew that those were foolish thoughts. Twist was dead, and Pinkie Pie killed her. She had tortured her and put her cutie mark on that sick dress of hers. Yes, the dress. Scootaloo tried to push the thought of the dress out of her mind, but the knowledge of the, its materials kept forcing itself back into her mind. Cutie marks. It had been made of cutie marks. Scootaloo remembered her own flank and how she was f looking forward for that special moment. When her cutie mark appeared and she knew what she was supposed to be, each of those ponies on her dress had felt that excitement as they discovered who they truly were and Pinkie Pie had ensured that they spent their last moments in agonizing fear and pain. As she cut out their marks, tore their very identities away from them before she killed them, she kept the marks on her dress as a sick trophy of her twisted accomplishments. Twist. Pinkie Pie had killed. Twist. Scootaloo's eyes slowly fluttered open. She glanced at the clock on her wall, which read 134. She had been asleep for about five hours now, and she felt more rested than she had before. However, the memories of that morning rushed back towards her, and she felt her eyes fill with more tears once more. Even the sweet embrace of sleep had not erased the fact that Pinkie Pie had murdered one of her classmates, along with dozens of other ponies. Scootaloo sighed, dejected, and got out of bed. She couldn't stay in bed all morning, and besides... She wasn't tired anymore. She had to get up and do something, or else she'll go, she would go insane. Just thinking about Pinkie Pie and what she had done, Scootaloo walked slowly into the main room of her house. She expected to find her parents there talking in hushed whispers about what had happened that morning, but to her surprise, nobody was there. Mom? Scootaloo called out, Dad, are you guys home? There was no response. Scootaloo walked into the kitchen and hoped and hopped up on a nearby stool. Normally, when both her parents were gone, they left a note for her, telling her where they had gone, when they'd be back. Sure enough, a note was taped to the kitchen counter. Scootaloo Ideally, 
we should ha be back before you wake up. But in this instance that we don't, we left you this. A town meeting was called today to discuss the events of this morning. We should be back by free or at the late, very latest. We left you a sandwich in the fridge. For when get hungry, don't go to town hall. We don't want you hearing about all of this just yet. We would like to talk to you about it ourselves when we know exactly what's going on. Love, Mom and Dad. Scootaloo sighed and hopped off the stool. Her parents would doubtfully give her some watered-down version of what happened and she would hear the real version from the schoolyard somewhere among all the rumors. She wished that her parents would treat her like a grown mare and just tell her all the gritty details. She would find out soon enough anyway. Scootaloo slowly trekked over to the scooter and put on her helmet. She needed to get out of the house for a little bit. She would go insane. She just sat there for an hour and a half waiting for her parents to arrive. She always felt more relaxed and level-headed headed on her scooter anyway. She pushed open the front door and was off. The streets of Ponyville were empty as she zoomed up the familiar building. No doubt the entirety of the town was at the meeting to discuss Pinky's murders. She wondered if the other two crusaders were at the meeting too or if they had been told by their sisters to stay away and keep out of it until they could talk to them about it in a safe place. She hated being a filly at times like this. No pony fought. She was emotionally mature enough to handle tough topics. Scootaloo sighed as she hopped past town. Hall, if only Rainbow Dash was here. She could tell Scootaloo all about this. She would treat her like a grown mare and, and tell her what was going on without, without being condescending about it. She had a way with Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash had disappeared a week ago. No, no. That couldn't be it. She was touring with the Wonderbolts, right? She wasn't dead. Pinkie Pie hadn't killed her. Scootaloo grounded to a halt and began hyperventilating. Rainbow Dash was fine. No. Rainbow Dash was dead. No, she wasn't. She was touring with the... With the... No. A small whimper escaped Scootaloo's throat as the very possibility hit her. Rainbow Dash might have been tortured and murdered by one of her best friends in the whole world. The element of loyalty endured the ultimate betrayal. Scootaloo jumped back on her scooter, zoomed towards the hall, the library. It was the closest and maybe Twilight would be there. Maybe she was in direct contact with the princess, thus would know all about what was going on. She had to find Twilight. Twilight would tell her that everything was going to be okay and Rainbow Dash was alive and, well, she wasn't dead. She couldn't be dead. As the gigantic tree library came into view, Scootaloo saw one of the most disheartening sights that any pony could see at her a time like this. Twilight Sparkle sat unmoving in front of the door of the library, with her head held below. It looked as if she had carried the weight of a whole world on her shoulder. Scootaloo screeched to a halt right next to the purple unicorn. Twilight merely stared at the ground, not even crying, however, the look of utter helplessness on her face scared Scootaloo even more. Twilight? said Scootaloo. The unicorn jumped when her name was called, and she turned to the source of her voice. Oh, Scootaloo, she said quietly. Twilight, I saw what happened. I saw her dress of cutie marks. She killed them all. Scootaloo. Twilight, please tell me. Please tell me that she didn't kill Rainbow Dash. She went off to join the Wonderbolts, right? 
She... She's fine. She didn't die. King Pinkie Pie didn't kill her, right? Twilight merely stared at the filly with a look of horror on her face. Twilight, p p please tell me. She... She did, said Twilight blankly. Scootaloo's eyes widened, and she looked, took a step back from the unicorn. No! She didn't! Rainbow Dash, it, it, it is! Twilight merely continued, her horrified gaze, a gaze that refused to deny the truth. Scootaloo whimpered once more, and jumped on her Scootaloo. Scootaloo! She heard Twilight call, but she ignored her. No, no. She had to get away. She had to go somewhere where this wasn't happening. She couldn't be dead. Rainbow Dash couldn't be dead. She was fine. She would come back from the Wonder Bolts, and while she would be just as horrified as the rest of them at what Pinky had done, she would be the same old Rainbow Dash. Nothing bothered Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash was scared of wasn't scared of anything. Rainbow Dash was was Rainbow Dash was dead. After a moment, Scootaloo found herself in a small clearing in the outskirts of the Everfree Forest. The tall trees towered over her, as if it protected her. They would be her silent guardians protecting her from the horrors of the world. No pony could protect her from what Pinkie Pie had done. She had killed Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash was dead. Scootaloo slowly stepped off the scooter and began walking. She didn't know where she was going, but she felt that her scooter could take her no further. However, she only made it a few feet before her legs betrayed her and the weight of what she had just discovered took her strength away. She collapsed on the ground, curled up into a ball. She was in too much shock to even cry, but the time for that would come very soon. She felt like a great pair of hooves were wrapped around her chest, slowly crushing the life out of her. No matter how she moved, she felt like the hooves were crushing her tight. She couldn't breathe. The knowledge of what happened was crushing her. She couldn't even cry. She wanted to cry. She wanted the tears to flow. Instead, she could only begin screaming. Scootaloo walked silently next to a member of the Ponyville Police Department towards a small cell at the end of the hallway. It had been three days since the arrest of Pinkie Pie, and a gloom hung over the town. No pony smiled anymore. No pony had a reason to smile. Every pony had lost friends during P Pinkie Pie's rampage. Some had lost families. Some had lost parents, brothers, sisters, children. Some parents had lost their children. The police officer pointed towards a cell at the end of the hallway, a cell that contained the cupcake killer herself, Pinkie Pie. You have five minutes, said the cop. Scootaloo nodded and slowly continued walking towards the cell. Truth be told, she was rather afraid of what she would find in there. She didn't know what to expect. No pony knew what to expect from Pinkie Pie at the best of times, but now. Scootaloo finally reached the end of the hallway. Looking inside the cell, she was immediately greeted with a sight of a dark, drab, and unforgivable cell. With one exception, the pink pony it contained. Pinkie Pie was sitting on the bed in the cell with her back to the bars. She was humming happily to herself like she often did. Scootaloo found no happiness with the behavior anymore. No pony, whatever again. Suddenly Pinkie Pie's ears perked up and slightly, and she turned around 
when she saw who was behind her. She gave her usual grin. Hey, Scootaloo! How are you today? She said. Scootaloo's resolve faltered slightly at the sight of the happy mare. Her grin wasn't warm or friendly. It was dark and threatening, and yet it had not changed. You killed her, whispered Scootaloo. You killed Rainbow Dash. Pinkie Pie giggled at the accusation, which caused Scootaloo to flinch back slightly. Of course I did, silly, said Pinkie Pie. Her number came up. Well, I don't make the rules. I ran out of, of the special ingredient. How could you do that to her? How could you just kill her like that in cold blood? She was your friend, Pinkie Pie. She was... She, she was your best friend. I know, said Pinkie Pie happily. That's why I was so excited when her number came up. We got to spend her last moments together, just the two of us, like I always imagined. Pinkie Pie, face darkened ever so slightly. But she didn't stand up as well as I thought she would. She was also very rude to fall asleep on me. Shut up. Scootaloo screeched. Screeched Scootaloo. She rushed up to the bars and glared at the murderous pony. You killed her! You evil monsters! I hate you! I fucking hate you! Scootaloo's words were cut short when the pink forelegs were extended through the bars. Wrapping around her neck, Scootaloo didn't even have time to scream before she was face to face with the pink butcher. Pinkie Pie's face was no longer happy, carefree. One, one of the few minutes ago, this Pinkie Pie gave Scootaloo a glare that immediately sucked all of the rage out of her and replaced it with unadulterated fear. You shouldn't say the words like that, growled Pinkie Pie. Scootaloo was too scared to cry out for help. She wanted to cry, but the mare's piercing gaze suppress that. Bad language makes for bad feelings. Don't you agree, Scootaloo? Scootaloo could only whimper in fear. This was the end. She knew it. Pinkie Pie was going to snap her neck like a toothpick. Right here and now. I said, don't you agree? Yes, whimpered Scootaloo. Immediately, Pinkie Pie put down the terrifying filly and her goofy grin returned. That's better, said Pinkie Pie. I know that you weren't a bad filly. You just lost your temper, that's all. You you killed Rainbow Dash. Of course I did, said Pinkie Pie. I told you. Her number came up. If Twilight's number came up, I would make cupcakes with her. If Rarity's number came up, I would have made cupcakes with her. Same with Fluttershy, Applejacks, even you. Scootaloo walked silently next to a member of the Ponyville Police Department towards a small cell at the end of the hallway. It had been three days since the arrest of Pinkie Pie, <clears throat> and a gloom hung over the town. No pony smiled anymore. No pony had a reason to smile. Every pony had lost friends during P Pinkie Pie's rampage. Some had lost families. Some had lost parents, brothers, sisters children. Some parents had lost their children. The police officer pointed towards a cell at the end of the hallway, a cell that contained the cupcake killer herself, Pinkie Pie. You have five minutes, said the cop. Scootaloo nodded and slowly continued walking towards the cell. Truth be told, she was rather afraid of what she would find in there. She didn't know what to expect. No pony knew what to expect from Pinkie Pie at the best of times. But now, Scootaloo finally reached the end of the hallway. Looking inside the cell, she was immediately greeted with a sight of, of a dark, drab, and unforgivable cell. With one exception, the pink pony it contained. Pinkie Pie was sitting on the bed in the cell. With her back to the bars, she was humming happily to herself, like she often did. Scootaloo found 
No happiness with the behavior anymore. No pony. Whatever again. Suddenly Pinkie Pie's ears perked up in slightly and she turned around when she saw who was behind her. She gave her usual grin. Hey, Scootaloo! How are you today? She said. Scootaloo resolved faultly. Scootaloo's resolve faltered slightly at the sight of the happy mare. Her grin wasn't warm or friendly. It was dark and threatening, and yet it had not changed. You killed her! whispered Scootaloo. You killed Rainbow Dash. Pinkie Pie giggled at the accusation, which caused Scootaloo to flinch back slightly. Of course I did, silly, said Pinkie Pie. Her number came up. Well, I don't make the rules. I ran out of, of the special ingredient. How could you do that to her? How could you just kill her like that in cold blood? She was your friend, Pinkie Pie. She wa- She- she was your best friend. I know, said Pinkie Pie happily. That's why I was so excited when her number came up. We got to spend her last moments together, just the two of us, like I always imagined. Pinkie Pie, face darkened ever so slightly. But she didn't stand up as well as I thought she would. She was also very rude to fall asleep on me. Shut up, screeched Scootaloo. She rushed up to the bars and glared at the murderous pony. You killed her! You evil monsters! I hate you! I fucking hate you! Scootaloo's words were cut short. Pink forelegs were extended through the bars, wrapping around her neck. Scootaloo didn't even have time to scream before she was face to face with the pink butcher. Pinkie Pie's face was no longer happy, carefree, one of the few minutes ago. This Pinkie Pie gave Scootaloo a glare that immediately sucked all of the rage out of her and replaced it with unadulterated fear. You shouldn't say the words like that, growled Pinkie Pie. Scootaloo was too scared to cry out for help. She wanted to cry, but somehow the mare's piercing gaze suppressed that. Bad language makes for bad feelings. Don't you agree, Scootaloo? Scootaloo could only whimper in fear. This was the end. She knew it. Pinkie Pie was going to snap her neck like a toothpick. Right here and now. I said, don't you agree? Yes, whimpered Scootaloo. Immediately, Pinkie Pie put down the terrifying filly, and her goofy grin returned. That's better, said Pinkie Pie. I know that you weren't a bad filly. You just lost your temper, that's all. You killed Rainbow Dash. Of course I did, said Pinkie Pie. I told you. Her number came up. If Twilight's number came up, I would make cupcakes with her. If Rarity's number came up, I would have made cupcakes with her. Same for with Fluttershy, Applejacks, even you. Scootaloo's eyes widened in horror, and she backed away from the cell. If Pinkie Pie hadn't been caught... She would have killed her. I... I have a number? Whispered Scootaloo. Pinkie Pie giggled once more. Of course you did, silly. Every pony in Ponyville had a number. Now that I think about it, it's too bad I never drew yours. I think we would have had a lot of fun together. Scootaloo whimpered again and backed away from the cell and the horrors it contained. Hey, where are you going? Asked Pinkie Pie confusedly. You still have two more minutes to visit me. You didn't come here just to say you hated me, did you? Scootaloo continued backing away, her eyes locked with Pinkie Pie's. I mean, how can you hate me for what I did when you had such a wonderful cupcake out of it? I seem to recall you really liked my rainbow delights. Scootaloo stopped dead in her tracks. Rainbow Delights? Had she eaten Rainbow Dash? Instantly, Scootaloo collapsed on the ground once more. She couldn't have. No. Not even Pinkie Pie could be this cruel enough to feed her Rainbow Dash. What's the matter? Asked Pinkie Pie. I thought you always wanted to be like Rainbow. Well, now she's a part of you. Forever. Scootaloo opened her mouth and let out 
an ear-piercing shriek. The rain came down with the force unlike any could have imagined. With the events of the past few weeks, Ponyville Pegasi had missed three separate storms, and now they needed another doozy of a downpour to make up for it. However, for five ponies, the rain was not their concern. Scootaloo, Applejack, and Twilight, Rarity, and Fluttershy all sat on the hard metal chairs in a simple white room, looking towards the gl a glass wall and an equally sparsely furnished room. All it had was a tray with a sol solitary syringe on it and a table with a restraint on it. Today was the day of the execution of Pinkie Pie. Despite herself, Scootaloo had been looking forward to this day ever since her meeting with Pinkie Pie. To see that evil smile fade away as a fatal liquid flowed through Pinkie Pie's veins would surely bring her satisfaction. Pinkie Pie would now get what she deserved. Justice would be brought upon her for the terrible crimes she had committed. After today, she would begin to heal. The other four ponies sat silently behind, beside her. Come in. Unmoving and unblinking, Scootaloo only imagined what they were going through. As the elements of harmony, they had a bond far stronger than that of most ponies. Now the elements would lose yet another member. Would they even still work after this? Scootaloo didn't have long to wait before she saw the doors on the other end open, revealed Pinkie Pie with that trademark grin that she had plastered on her face. She turned and saw her friends and Scootaloo sitting behind the glass. She widened her grin and waved at them. Hiya! She said happily. I'm so glad you could all come out here to see me today. I always love seeing my bestest friends in the whole world. Scootaloo heard Fluttershy burst into tears behind her. Rarity wrapping her forelegs around her and began stroking her mane, whispering in her ears that everything would be okay. Scootaloo knew that Rarity didn't believe her own words. Pinkie Pie frowned at sight of a weeping Fluttershy, but she shrugged and turned around to face the execution table. A couple of guards were advancing towards her to get her on the table. In that moment, the reality of her situation seemed to click for Pinkie Pie, and Scootaloo heard her let out a small whimper. No, she whispered. No, I don't want this. Please, leave me alone. Please don't do this to me. The guards paid her no heed and continued to advance. Pinkie Pie panicked and bolted towards the door, the open door. She didn't make it more than a few feet before the guards fired up their horns and encased her magical glow trapping her. No! Please don't do this! To me! I'll do anything! Please don't give me this! That please! The guards moved. The guards moved the struggling pink pony towards the table and began strapping her t in. Pinkie Pie struggled every second. They strapped her in. Please don't do this! I'm sorry! I'll bring them back if you want me to! Don't! Please don't do this! Scootaloo heard Fluttershy wail in sorrow. And she bolted out of the room, following closely by Rarity. Pinkie Pie turned her head, just in time to see them go. No, Fluttershy! Rarity, please don't let them do this to me! I'll throw you a big party if you get them to let me go! I, 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 I. At that, Applejack burst into tears and ran out of the room as well. AJ, please stop them! Don't leave me here alone! Please don't leave me with them! One of the guards fired her horn and the syringe was encased in a blue glow, a pale blue glow, seeing that this was the final straw for Twilight, who ran out of the room as well. Pinkie Pie began wailing in sorrow and fear as the last of her friends left her to face her death alone. No, please don't give me that. I'll do anything. Pinkie Pie pleaded. I'll never bake another cupcake as long as I live. I'll be good, I promise. Scootaloo stared blankly at the struggling form of the pink pony. She was crying like a little fowl, just like some of the fowls that she butchered in cold blood. Pinkie Pie continued to thrash around violently 
as the needle came close to Pinky's left foreleg. No, no, no! I don't want this! Please don't kill me! She wailed. Pinkie Pie turned, then turned back to the nearly empty room across from her and locked her eyes with a blank scootaloo. At that moment, Pinkie Pie actually managed to break the restraints towards her right foreleg, and she reached out to Scootaloo with pain and fear in her eyes. Dashy! The guard stru stuck the needle into Pinkie Pie's left foreleg and began to plunge the syringe, plunge down, forcing the liquid into Pinkie Pie's veins. Feeling the liquid in her, Pinkie Pie let out a gasp and arched her back before she seemed to deflate. I'm so sorry, Dashy. She mumbled pitifully. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to make you sad. I didn't want to. And with that, she was still. Scootaloo slowly walked out of, of the Ponyville police station. She put her helmet on and hopped on her scooter. Home. She had to go home. Her parents hadn't gone to her with the execution. In fact, she doubted they knew she had gone. She was only let in because of how much she loved Rainbow Dash. As she scooted away, she recalled the execution. Pinkie Pie had thrashed about like a fowl getting a shot. She had kicked and screamed and cried all the way through it. But in the end, she was still. The Cupcake Killer had been reduced to, been reduced to a mere fowl at the reality of her own demise. Scootaloo had expected to feel gratification from seeing the justice was served. She had expected some of the wounds from Rainbow Dash's death to heal when, the, when her killer was put down like an animal. She had expected to feel better. Instead, she felt empty.